Hey, hello everybody, this is Purge bringing you a very special thing. I'm going to be going over every single item in the game. This is for those new players. If you guys are experienced in Dota, um, this might be a little boring for you, but I promise I'm going to go over every single item, talk about why it's good, talk about the kinds of heroes that are going to be in, that are going to want to use it. Hopefully you can get a lot of insight, even if you already know where all these items are. So I'm at the old magic random button, and I'm going to get a draw ranger, and since I'm cheating, I'm going to cheat more, right? Am I right? Alright, cool. Just in case I want to buy anything. So first thing I want to buy, I'm just going to buy boots so I can get places if I need to. Alright, I'm going to spend almost all of my time here going through the shop. I'm not even going to... What does this button do, by the way? Oh, cool. Load a build. Load a build. Alright, now I can get Tidehunter items on my draw ranger. That's cool. Alright, anyways. Okay, so a couple of quick observations and things about the Dota shop. It's exactly the same as it was in Dota 1. It's exactly the same. The only difference are, is that there are tabs instead of different shops. Basically, every single one of these tab was a different building. So, like, for example, the Arcane building, it was right here. The Armaments dude, it was right here. The Attributes, it was some girl standing right here. And finally, the Consumables was, like, another building down here. They were all in the base. That was the only thing. All of their, they were all organized. Even the recipes. This is basically the recipes, or the uh, things like every single one of these was a different recipe shop, and they were just ornamented across the top of the fountain. All that stuff is in Dota One, so it's really not that different at all. Now, um, everything's organized by type, basically. Consumables here. Clarity Potion restores mana over time. Tango restores HP over time. Healing Salve is a lot, it's like a burst HP regen, but if you get attacked, you don't, uh, it stops regening. Smoke of Deceit is a very interesting item. It's basically used to make you and a bunch of your allies go uh, invisible to wards and regular creeps, pretty much. Wards and regular creeps. Um, basically, anybody that's not a hero or a tower, you're going to be invisible to. It also gives you a movement speed bonus, so what you use this for is to pop smoke, and then you run through wards, like people ward somewhere on the map, they're not going to see you when you run through the smoke of deceit, and then you can gank. It's basically a very, very good team fight gank um, ninja item, I guess. You use it and you get places. It's 100 gold, it has a uh, cooldown before you can purchase it again. I believe it's 10 minutes or something like that. So once you use it, the 3 stock, uh, or yeah, 12 minutes here. 12 minutes of restock for the smoke of deceit. So let's see if this works now. Nope, it's still bugged. So I can sail back for full, but it doesn't restock the shop. So. Um, not a big deal. Alright, TP scroll, the most basic item in the game. You use it to teleport to a building, it has a duration. If uh, multiple allies TP to a tower at the same time, um, the people who are second and third and fourth, they have longer and longer TP times, this, so you can't just like show your whole team up at somewhere immediately. Stuff like that. Alright, Dust of Appearance reveals nearby invisible units for 12 seconds. It has a big radius, it has a big cooldown, 60 seconds, and it costs just a little bit of mana to use. Uh, Animal Courier is obviously the fancy fancy couriers that we're all familiar with do 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 and uh... well I swear to god this is worth it alright and then we have to do is my circle big enough? it's not big enough it's not big enough I swear to god guys Oops. Damn it. I think you need like a tree or something to walk around. God, the curry makes a little sound. There we go. Alright, anyways. Onward. Uh, basically, what's going on is... Alright, Courier. So you make Couriers, you bring yourself items. If you want to upgrade that, that's in the Upgrade tab. It is right here. You just purchase that. It'll go in... If the Courier is in the Fountain, it'll automatically upgrade. Really, really easy stuff. Alright, next stuff. Um, observer Wards are used to place um, on the map. Best places to place them are on RuneSpot. There's a lot of guides online about this. Don't be afraid to go look them up, guys. I've talked about them in other casts as well. Um... But there's a lot of really done guides on the internet, different places, playdota.com. Um, there's videos, people made YouTube videos about it. Just go search. You'll get a lot of good information. Just be aware that sometimes where to place wards gets changed over time. People value more spots other than others, things like that. Sentry wards is like an observer ward, but it gives true sight, just true sight. doesn't give any regular vision, but it does let you see invisible heroes. Or invisible, I don't know the exact exact range, but it's probably about this big, something like this. Like the 
like my screen, like about this big AOE, if the, if the Sentry Ward is right in my position. So that's good for heroes that go invisible. You can basically use either Sentry Wards or Dust to gank invisible heroes. Depending on which one you want to use, kind of depends on the hero you're fighting. If it's like Rikimaru or Bounty Hunter, Dust is usually a lot better. If you're fighting heroes like uh, Weaver, Sentry Wards are usually a little easier. And Sentry Wards are best for pushing, because you just place them down in front of the tower, not in, within the tower's... Um, true sight range, but in front of the tower so that while you're pushing, basically, um, you'll see if an invisible hero comes out. Dust of Appearance is a one-off thing. You cast it, and if he's not there, he's not going to become visible, so it's kind of frustrating. Donkeys, get back in line. Alright. But final item is the bottle, guys. You use it three charges, heals you up 135 HP, 70 mana per charge. If you bottle a rune, which means you right-click a rune when you have a bottle in your inventory, it refills the bottle and stores the rune. So to use the bottle charges, you have to also use the rune. So bottle's really good if you're mid, because you can obviously rune at the top and the bottom and end up getting a lot of regen out of it, and also good ganking possibilities, because you can store those runes. So that's all the consumables, all the items that are used when you use them. Next tab, attributes. So these are all items that give you stats. Ironwood Branch is the best ratio for gold to stat. It gives you three stats for 53 gold. That's a very good ratio. Gauntlets of Strength, Slippers of Agility, and Mantles of Intelligence also give you three stats, but they give you three of one stat. So Gauntlet gives you three Strength, Agility gives you three Agility, Mantle gives you three Intelligence. So this means that three the Ironwood Branches, which cost nine gold more than any of these three items, gives you an extra nine stats. Do you see why it's so good? to you fill your inventory with Ironwood branches at the start of the game, it's by far the most cost efficient. I mean, if you had an unlimited inventory size, you would have unlimited Ironwood branches. It'd be by far the cheapest way to go. Okay. So, um, if you don't know about primary attributes, guys, here they are. Just putting my mouse cursor over here. Every strength point increases your HP by 19, can increase your HP regen by 0.03. It's very, very small. Every point of agility increases your damage by 1 and attack speed by 1%. In Drow's case, since her primary attribute is agility, it also increases your damage by 1. I'm sorry, uh, I, I said that wrong. Every agility point increases your... Every 7 points of agility increase your armor by 1, and your attack speed by 1%. If you're an agility hero like Drow is, that's why I read it, it also increases your damage by 1. So the primary attributes get bonus damage from their pri from more of that primary stat, so that's important to remember. And finally, intelligence, every point gives your mana, increase your mana by 13, and it also increases your mana regen by 0 .04. So, that's what stats do, guys. Don't be afraid to pick up GG's, that's the main point. As we move into the more complex ones, Circlet gives you plus 2 to attributes, that's equivalent to 2 Ironwood branches, but it's like twice as expensive. Belt of Giant Strength, Boots of Elven, Skin, Rope of the Magi, all plus 6 to those stats. Very, very simple. And Ogre Club, just extending that down again, Ogre Club is 10 Strength, Blade of Alacrity is 10 Agility, Staff of Wizardry is 10 Intelligence. If you guys ever want to see what this stuff builds to, just left-click on it and you can see. These are all the items, basically. Staff of Wizardry obviously building into much more things, but um, that's absolutely not a problem at all. Uh, Robo the Magi actually really popular as well. And finally, Ultimate Orb is the best item. It's the Uber Ironwood Branch, plus 10 to all attributes. It's really expensive, 2100 gold, but for good reason, because it is a lot of advantage, you know, it's like leveling up like five or six times. Okay, next stuff, armaments. This is stuff that is armor or damage or weird and doesn't really fit anywhere else. Ringer Protection gives you armor that builds into a Basilius. Quelling Blade lets you last hit creeps better and cut down trees. Stout Shield blocks damage. Blades of Attack, nine damage. My bad, that's my Skype. One sec. Sorry about that. Alright, so, Stout Shield blocks damage, Blades of Attack does damage, Chainmail gives you 5 armor, costs 550, Helm of Ironwood gives you armor and regen, this builds into a Helm of the Dominator, or an armlet, and also an Avail, but nobody ever builds that really. Broadsword, 18 damage here, builds into Battle Fury, uh, Crystallis, Blade Mail, Quarterstaff, does 10 damage and 10 attack speed. The most item that the most common item that builds into is probably I mean four staff butterfly and shadow blade are semi common and uh, oblivion staff also that goes towards an orchid and occasionally refresh orb which nobody ever builds. But I'll get to those recipes later if you guys don't know what they are. Claymore also used for a battle fury and a shadow blade. Um, Javelin builds in a monkey king bar or a basher. Almost always gonna be a monkey king bar unless you're playing a pub game. Then we'll see a skull basher. But Javelin gives 21 damage. Also has a percent chance to do 40 extra damage. It's like a, uh, but generally when most people build a Monkey King bar, they always get the Demon Edge first, but we can talk about that once again when we get there. Play Mail is the best armor item, 10 armor here, um, 
gives you approximately 60% effective HP against physical attacks, so it's very, very good for increasing your survivability late game. And Mithril Hammer, plus 24 damage. It's the biggest plus damage item in the game. Um, ends up doing more than uh, the Javelin even. Uh, actually, technically, Javelin probably does a little bit more. Yeah, Javelin's only a little bit less expensive. So 20% of 40 is technically a Javelin does 29 damage, I think. If you do 20% of 40, it's 10% of 4, that's 8, 29 damage, but not a big deal. Just ignore that. I'm just theory crafting. I haven't actually looked at those numbers. I've done them before. Final shop is Arcane, so this is actually the, all the weird shit. Um, that's definitely the best way to explain it. Magic Stick. This is a really, really good item. It's good on almost every single hero, guys. Magic Stick. You activate it, it regens yourself up, uh... But depending on... Alright, I didn't explain that well, sorry. Um... If you have a magic stick in your inventory, and an enemy near you, an enemy hero, casts a spell, then you can then accrue all those charges. It holds up to 10 charges, and as you activate the ability, it spends all the charges, and you get field 15 HP and 15 mana per charge you have. So basically it's 150 HP and 150 mana heal if, you have, if you're at 10 charges. This does build into a magic wand, which is an item that I build on almost every almost every single hero, and the only difference is this gives you plus three to attributes based on the GG branches it used for it, and it can have up to 15 charges instead of just 10. So magic wands are really good. Sage's Mask is a 50% 50, 50 mana regen item. It's used for a bunch of different things, as you can see. Ring of Regen, um, just a really shitty regen item. 2 HP regen, it costs 350, that's really expensive. Don't be afraid, guys, to just buy healing self. That costs 100 gold, it heals you 400 HP. And that's over 10 seconds. It's just done. You buy it, you use it, you don't have to sell it back later. I mean, it takes a long time for a ring of regen to pay off, basically. Boots of speed, everybody needs one of these. 55 movement speed. Gloves of haste, 15% attack speed. Those build into treads. Armlet, handomitis, Mjolnir, I'm sorry, that's, uh, Maelstrom, my bad. Uh, cloak gives you 15% spell resistance. Gem of True Sight's an item that you don't see very often, but basically you carry it and it, you basically become a walking sentry ward. The downside is if you die, it drops, so you gotta make sure that you don't die. It makes a big difference. It's really good for dewarding and killing heroes like, once again, Weaver, Ricky Mark, um, Bounty Hunter, stuff like that. Morbid Mask, 15% life steal. Pretty basic stuff. You can build that into a few things. Ghost Scepter is a really good item. It only builds into one thing, but what it does is you activate it, you become Ethereal for four seconds, and what Ethereal means, you can't be attacked, um, and you also can't attack, but you take 40% extra damage from spells. So you gotta be careful. That's a good item against heroes like Ursa. Ursa can't do any damage to you except for, like, his clap, but it's totally worth it. Four seconds of being invulnerable to stuff like that makes a big difference. Talisman of Evasion, 25% evasion to all attacks that people try to make on you. This doesn't count for spells, just physical stuff, and that does build into a butterfly. And finally, a very, very good item, Blink Dagger, um, lets you teleport or blink up to 1,200 units away. If you take damage, you'll notice the Blink Dagger goes on a cooldown for 3 seconds repeatedly, so sometimes you'll see this in my videos where I'm buying, playing with a Blink Dagger, is that I'll be taking damage, I can't blink away because I'm taking damage. You have to wait till you stop taking damage, and then you can blink. So Blink Dagger is... Pretty good for escaping, but much better for initiating. It kind of comes down to how, how routine the damage is. So that's all the basic stuff. With all of these basic items, we can basically um, purchase almost everything. I'm going to buy a Blink Dagger quick and go to the secret shop. Actually, I'm going to buy a Boots of Travel because I want to go to the secret shop so I can show you guys the other basic items. Other than those items that I just showed you right here, the, all the other items can be retrieved from the secret shop. Oh god, don't give me that crap. Walking around, walking around. The reason that the that secret shop is in the game, basically, is to provide more roaming and more chances for people to get killed, basically, or to force more team fights. Also, in the late game, when you're trying to turtle up your base, basically, you can't get out of your base, and therefore it's harder for you to be able to hold off the game, because you can't keep buying items like the everyone else on the pushing team can do. All of the best single items in the game are here. You'll see the very expensive best stat items in the game, plus 25, Mystic Staff, Reaver, and Eagle Song. These do cost different amounts, but that's just to scale the items. It is worthwhile. It is fair. So those are the most expensive stat items. The biggest damage items are also here. We have a Sacred Relic, plus 60 damage. Demon Edge, plus 46 damage. You have the best attack speed item in the game. There aren't, I'm, uh, I guess basically it's just Gloves of Haste and a Hyperstone. I think those are, might be the only attack speed items. But Hyperspawn, 55% attack speed. And then the biggest HP and stat increasing, not stat, uh, just like HP mana increasing items, Point Booster, Vitality Booster, 
energy booster. 250 mana, 250 health, and 200 health, 250, 150 mana. Point booster is very good. Also, we have the best regen items in the game over here. Ring of Health is 5 regen. Void Stone is 100% mana regen. And finally, the Orb of Venom is sold here, apparently. Um, I think, yeah, yeah. I think it's sold at the, sold at the side shop also. But it basically, I'm kind of curious why this is here, but I guess it's fine. Um, gives you a melee slow damage over time. It does much less slow if you're ranged uh, a third of it, actually. So for only 4% slow on a ranged hero, 12% on a melee hero. It's not very commonly used. Very, very, very rarely this item is used. But it's only 450. So those are that's every single item in the game, guys, that I just went over. Uh, all basic items. Everything that's left is just recipes. All you have to do from there is make recipes. Now I'm gonna go show you the side shop really, really quick. And the only reason I'm doing this is basically you need to know what's over here. This is the side shops were added maybe like a year and a half ago, two years, something like that. And the reason that they were added was just to make laning easier and less annoying. There used to not be boots of speed over here, so the only way to get boots of speed as a noob was to run back to base. It was actually a really big deal when Boots of Speed were added. So these are basically all of the items. It's like a variety of things that you're basically going to need in the early to mid game. It's very well planned out. Everything that is here is something like the most common items that you're going to want in lane. You can't get the recipes, of course, to the items that will help you combine stuff usually. But as a whole, all of the really nice stuff is here. TP Scroll, Magic Stick, Stout Shield, Sage's Mask, Ring of Regen, Orb of Venom. Boots of Speed is really important. Boots of Speed is over here. Uh, the cloak is okay. Ring of health is really important. I feel like the most important items in the side shop are probably ring of health, boots of speed, uh, energy boosters really big. You can make arcane boots over here. But always remember, guys, you can actually make a full hood of defiance in the side shop on the on the sides of the map. There's one here on the map, and there's also one in the bottom right of the map. So um, down here as well as up there. Oops. There we go. Two sides of the map. Side shops. Here's the other secret shop as well. If you look on the map, you can see like a little gray dot. So here's the secret shop. Here is the other secret shop. It's more or less symmetrical. So, other than that item, there is a second page, Slippers of Agility. That's so you can help make a poor man's shield if you want. Another Quelling Blade, Boots of Elven Skin, actually all the basic items. This allows you to buy treads over here with Gloves of Haste, Blades of Attack. You can basically upgrade any boots other than um, Boots of Travel, because that's a recipe. And there's also a Chainmail Quarter Staff, Talisman Evasion. You can almost make a butterfly, ba you basically make a butterfly without going back to base ultimate orb, and also a blink dagger. So that's all the items. That's literally all of these singular items in the game. So I'm going to TP back to base. We're going to go over the upgrades or the recipes really, really fast here. Alright. Uh, while I talk about these, I'm going to talk about why they're good and what kind of heroes they're good with. So this is the common items, all of the most basic ones. Wraithband, just a stat item, basically good for agility. It has the most agility, 3 strength, 6 agility, 3 intelligence, 3 damage. It's the cheapest one. Null Talisman is an intelligence one. Six intelligence, three to the rest, still three damage. And Bracer is uh, strength. It's the most expensive because it is the best one. Strength, having more HP is on average a better thing. Magic Wand recipe is here. I talked about that before. Heals you based on the charges. Poor Man's Shield that has a little damage block, a melee block, a ranged block. It tells you the percentage of chance. This means, it doesn't mean that if you take a ranged attack, you block 10, and if you take a melee attack, you block 20. What this means is, if you're a ranged hero, it only blocks 10 damage. If you're a melee hero, it actually blocks 20 damage. So it's twice as good for melee heroes. It is almost always a waste to get on a ranged hero. Absolutely, completely. Almost always a waste. If you block 10 damage, let's look at my base damage right now. I'm a level 1 hero. I'm going to pick up my aura, and so that's going to simulate 3 damage here. So I'm doing 48 damage. Poor Man's Shield is going to block 10 of that. So if I am attacking a hero who has a Poor Man's Shield, they're blocked 10 damage, which is 48 minus 10, which is 38. So you're reducing the percentage of damage by approximately 20% right off the bat before you apply armor. Poor Man's Shields take numbers, take the block off the top of the number before armor is applied. So that 38 damage is then further reduced by armor. So at low levels, Poor Man's Shield is pretty cool. Um, you know, 20% damage block, or 20% damage reduction just for a shield at the start of the game. That's really good. But when our numbers shift up, let's say I'm hitting for 100, which is like a mid-game drow probably. I'm hitting for 100, 10 of that is blocked. All of a it's only blocking 10%. So shields work really well at the beginning of the game when everybody's damage is low. They're very good against blocking creep damage as well. But in the late game, don't even bother. Sell that item off. At some point, it's not going to be very effective. Poor man's shields are really good against, on basically, melee carries. Um, who are not getting a vanguard. They're very good on melee carries. Heroes like um, uh, Ricky Maru, um, Anti-Mage, or Void, stuff like that. 
Go for heroes like that. Poor Man's Shield is awesome. Alright. Soaring an interesting item. Costs 800 gold. Um, there is the build up. I should probably click on some of those things while I go through them. I'll just click on these very briefly just so you guys can see the build up down here. Circlet slippers. You've looked at all these items before, so um, if with a guide or just with prior looking back at that stuff again, you'll be able to see what they do. Or what they contain. Bracer and Null Talisman and Wraith Man are very simple. The only difference is this plus three item. So very easy to build. Poor Man's Shield is a shield plus two slippers. And Soul Ring. Alright, there we go. Ring of Regen. Crappy item by itself. Silby Mask. Decent item by itself. It also costs a recipe. That means that you need this item to make Soul Ring. And basically here, this is what we got. So what it does is you use the ability, consumes 150 HP, you temporarily gain 150 mana. So you're trading HP for mana. After 10 seconds, that buff of mana from Soul Ring completely goes away. It also has a base 3 HP regen and 50% mana regen, so it's like a really weak perseverance, but it's about half the cost. So it's pretty good for that. And it's really good on heroes who have really expensive mana spells, and generally also have some kind of HP regen to couple with the Soul Ring, and it kind of makes you really, really self-reliant on mana. Like, you don't really need the mana because of Soul Ring. It's very good, but make sure you don't use it on squishy heroes. It's bad on squishy heroes. Don't go for it. It's good on tanks, HP heroes, or I mean, uh, strength heroes usually who don't have a lot of mana. Phase Boots is one of the first boot choices. You basically use a phase ability, you run through creeps, you run faster, and it gives you a lot of damage. It's very good for last hitting heroes like um, Lich or Windrunner who are just sitting in their lane, like solo heroes, because that gives them a lot of last hitting power and allows them to just win their lane much easier. Power Treads is another option. This is used on heroes who, um, you know, I missed a little something on Phase Boots. Phase Boots is really good, other than last hitting, it's very good for getting your hero in position or chasing. So if you're ever playing a hero who wants to chase, or get be in better position, or escape from fast heroes, or melee heroes, Phase Boots are really good. Get Phase Boots against heroes like Anti-Mage, because he's going to be able to hit you less, because he's not going to be as fast as you. Power Treads is very good. Movement speed... Um, it gives you, I'm sorry, it gives you attack speed, and it gives you up an attribute. You can switch these as you wish. You can use strength treads to get more HP. You can use int treads to have more mana. You can have agility treads to do more damage if you're an agility hero, something like that. But power treads are basically purchased when you want to increase your stats. You're more concerned about your stats. And oftentimes can't necessarily make a decision between strength or int. So if you're like a low squishy hero, buy power treads. Buy power treads if you're under farmed and a squishy support hero. Increases your HP, very cheap, can increase your damage by 25% because you're attacking faster, stuff like that. Oh yeah, we got their bottom tower. Alright, um, Oblivion Staff, those are the components, it basically builds into an orchid, just gives you uh, attack speed, intelligence, damage, it's basically a nice item for um, intelligence damage carries. So heroes like Storm Spirit is a perfect Oblivion staff. You don't necessarily see this, uh, you don't really see an Orchid on a lot of other heroes, but primarily get these items if this, you're gonna see this item pretty much only if you're building either an Orchid or a Refresher. We'll get there. Perseverance is used from the Secret Shop. This is what you need. It, you need a Ring of Health or you need a Void Stone. Those are like the basic mana regen items. Make sure you don't just like go out and buy this item regularly. It's really expensive. 1750 just for regen and it gives you 10 damage, but that's negligible in my opinion. 1750, that is a very, very expensive item. Don't just be like, oh, I could use some regen. Oh, I could use some mana regen. I'm gonna spend 1750 on a perseverance. That's a huge mistake because you could replace this perseverance with something like a bottle. Bottle is only 600. It should be able to get you enough regen. You don't wanna overspend on an item like perseverance. It's almost never gonna pay off. Unless you're building one of these four items, don't get a fast perseverance on any hero. Seriously, don't get any of these items. If you're not getting any of these four items, you should not be buying a Perseverance. So just ignore it. Don't worry about having the regen numbers. You're better off if you learn how to manage your HP and your mana with heroes like with items like bottles or salves, even like buying a salve in the mid game as a hard carry. Go for it. Once again, 100 gold, 400 HP. That's much cheaper than a Perseverance. All right. Hand of Minus is an item that not very many people use. It gives you attack speed, and it basically allows you to farm faster. I, I don't remember exactly what the time window is, but basically you get to turn a creep into gold every 100 seconds. It gives you 190 gold. The duration, or the cooldown is 100. And this item costs 1900, so it does take like 5 to 10 minutes before it starts getting you accelerated gold. But it's basically an item that lets you 
um, invest heavier in the late game. You can say, I don't necessarily, I mean, you can buy like almost an armlet for a Hand of Midas, but it's going to get you to your third item faster than you would if you didn't buy a Hand of Midas. That's the only time you should buy that item. It's popular on heroes like Life Stealer, on heroes like Nature's Prophet especially, we see a lot of Hand of Midas. Oftentimes we see them on carries more than anything else. Boots of Travel is a uh, is the most expensive boot upgrade. It doesn't see nearly as much play as it used to. There's really not a lot of times actually that I ever see a pro player or a pro team pick up Boots of Travel, and that's because it's really expensive. The recipe is 2200. It does give you a crap load of movement speed and it lets you TP to an allied hero or a structure. Actually, the only time that you see Boots of Travel basically is on Tinker, and that's because Tinker can abuse it. He can rearm it with one of his abilities, and he can basically teleport somewhere, rearm it, and teleport back immediately without ig just ignoring the cooldown basically. So Boots of Travel is often a very, very late game item if you get there, but as a whole, um, don't spend your money on this. It's really expensive, and it doesn't really give you that much viability. Unless you're playing Tinker, it's not worth getting this. So that's the common shop. Next one, support. Flying Courier. Every team that has a regular curry should ha Courier should have a Flying Courier. you got to buy this recipe at some point. A support should be buying this, basically. Ring of Basilius is a very, very nice basic item. Gives you a uh, smattering of uh, things. Gives you, it costs 500 gold, first of all. Gives you 6 damage. Gives you an, a mana regen aura of 900 AoE that is applied to your ally, so 0. 0.65 mana per second. It also gives you 1 armor. It also gives you a 2 armor aura, so basically the holder of the Ring of Basilius gets 3 armor, and your lane partners get 2 armor. When you have this item, it's important to toggle off the armor aura, though, because if you're pushing, if you're standing in a lane at level 1, your bottom tower has <laughs> Our towers are going, man. If you're pushing a lane at level 1 and your creeps, or if you're standing in a lane at level 1 and your creeps have two more armor than the enemy creeps, they're going to take longer to kill and your lane is going to push towards the enemy tower and you never want to push your lane unless you're trying to take a tower. Always remember that, guys. So that's really important. Um, so Ring of Basilis is very good on heroes who just need a little bit of mana regen, who aren't necessarily in heroes because their mana regen isn't going to be that good. So here on heroes like strength heroes, or even in heroes sometimes, just because it also gives you armor in heroes, you usually have low armor. And uh, most importantly, it's just really good on a lot of heroes. Very, very good item. Um, and it's very cheap. Don't get too many of them though, the auras do not stack. If two people in the same lane both have Ring of Basilius, the only thing that's benefited is that you both have 6 damage from it, and you both have 1 extra armor. And, and that's it. It's really not worth to get multiples. Try not to have more than two in an entire game. Headdress is one of the components of the mechanism. I'll go over the mech first. Mech is a very, very good support item. Gives you five armor, plus, plus five dollar attributes. Gives you HP regen of four, and that's in an aura. So that means anybody standing you know, close to you is going to get four HP per second. And it has an active. You click it, it heals everybody around you for 250 HP, and it gives them two plus two extra armor. Very, very, very good support item. It's only 2300 gold. It's not too expensive. The components of that are basically what it does. There's a headdress here. It gives you stats, and it gives you a regen aura of three. That costs 600 gold. And the other one is the buckler. This is a armor and stat item. If you click on this, it gives everybody in your area armor, plus two armor for 25 seconds, apparently. So that's the buckler. When you buy both of those and buy a mechanism recipe, which costs 900, you have a mechanism. A very, very good item. Every single team, pretty much, in the game should have a mechanism. It's so, so useful. Urn of Shadows is a cool new item that uh, Ice Frog added in the last year or two. Um, basically, if an enemy hero dies, you gain charges. Whoever's closest to the dying hero will gain a charge. To use this item, you basically accumulate the charges. By the way, when it's at zero charges, if you get a kill, you get two charges. That's pretty cool stuff. If you use it on an ally or yourself, you're going to heal up to 40, 400 HP over 8 seconds. It's like healing salve, basically. A little he heals a little bit faster. If you use it on an enemy, it only does 150 damage. So that's the trade-off. You can use it for healing after you gank. It's very good for that. You can also use it for giving a little bit extra burst damage. But either way, it can go both ways. You can use it as a heal. You can use it as a damage dealer. It also gives you 6 strength and 50% mana regen. This item is very good on support Your heroes. It's very good on strength attack. supports like Tidehunter. Um, it's very good on gankers. Very, very good on gankers. If you gank somebody, you get the kill, you get an earn charge, you leave tower range, and all of a sudden you heal up 400 HP, you go back to laning, you go back to ganking. It's very, very good on gankers. Medallion of Courage is a very, it's, it's also a very, very new item. Came after the Urn of Shadows, I believe. Gives you armor and mana regen. Uses a Sobe mask and a chainmail. 
um, and a recipe as well, 250 or 200 actually. Uh, what this item does as an active, you use it on an enemy, hero, or creep. It reduces the armor of yourself and your target by minus six. Now it does give you six armor by itself, so basically you're not losing anything by using it on an opponent. Since it already increases your armor by six, you're also lowering their armor. If you're in a one v one situation, this and both of you, both of you and your al enemy are attacking each other, and you have equal farm. It's not really a good item to use, but if you're playing a support hero and you're trying to burst somebody down in a short period of time, medallion is really good for that. So in a mid to late game situation, or even like a fast medallion in the early game, can be really, really effective. So don't be afraid to pick up this item either. Arcane Boots is possibly one of the best support items in the game. Probably is. It was recently added, not a whole long time ago. There used to be an other item called... Uh, Arcane Ring, which is the same property, you would it would basically give you you and your allies mana, but it was really expensive. I think it was a ring of protection. The recipe was like five hundred or something stupid like that, and uh, then you would also have to buy an energy booster. It was really expensive. Now it's basically boots and an energy booster. It's really good on support heroes. It's really good on int casters, stuff like that. It's actually good on a lot of heroes and strength heroes as well. Boost up your mana pool give you a lot of uh, regen. Arcane Boots is a wonderful item. Don't be afraid to get that. At least one person on your team should probably have an Arcane Boots every day, every game. Drum of Endurance is the most stat efficient item in the game. That's the first thing I want to preface this with. I need you to realize how good this item is. Look at the gold cost. 1725, okay? Let's see what it does. Plus 9 to all attributes, plus 9 damage, and it gives you and your allies a 5% attack speed aura and a 5% movement speed aura. It also has an active, it has four charges, you click a charge, it gives everyone in your general area 10% attack speed and 10% movement speed. This is extra on top of the aura. It's very good for team fights. helps you position better, helps you run away, stuff like that. So let's look at this once again. I'm 1725 gold gives you 9 to all stats and 9 damage. That alone is awesome. Let's compare this to a very basic item. The best stat item in the game, 10 to all attributes. This costs... 2100 gold. How much does Django cost? 1725, and it gives you 90 each. It is so cost efficient that it breaks the standard attack. Dota rules, the Dota math basically. That ultimate orb costs 210 gold per stat. This one, it's not as much. It's reduced amount. I don't know what 1725 divided by 9 is, guys. I'm sorry. You're going to have to look that one up. I'm not going to make a fool of myself. But Drum of Endurance is extremely efficient. It builds up from a bracer into a robe of the magi with a recipe, and it's an awesome item. Get this on support heroes. Try not to get it on carries, but support heroes definitely get this item. Boosts up your HP, gives you a little bit of damage. Really good item. Okay, back to that. Vladimir's offering. Actually, one second, I'm gonna drink some water. Ah, beautiful water. All right, Vladimir's offering. Vladimir's offering is a glorified. Ring of Basilius. It's like a Ring of Basilius, and it gives you life steal. That's basically all it does, and a little bit of HP regen based on this Ring of Regen. It costs a lot more money than a Ring of Basilius. Make sure you guys don't make the mistake of buying going from a Ring of Basilius to a Vlad's in the early game as a carry. You should not be spending the money on a Vlad's in the early game. Let's look at the difference. Ring of Basilius gives you six damage. Vlad's gives you a fifteen percent damage bonus, even in the mid game. Remember, this is based on your primary stat here, so it would basically be 15% to 45, which is like 7 damage. So if I picked up a Vlad's right now, it increases my damage by 6. This increases my damage by just as much as a Ring of Basilius. I understand I'm a level 1 hero. Well, let's level up a bit. Level up. Let's say level 6. Alright, I leveled up, and now I'm at 12. Let's, uh, let's compare. Alright, so this is giving me 9 damage now, if I look at the numbers. I drop the Vlads, I pick up the Vlads. As a level 6 hero, this only gives me 9 damage. That's not very much at all, basically. It's not a very, very good damage item. It shouldn't be used for that. It is an aura, so that's applied to your allies, but still. Alright, what else does it do? It gives you armor, it gives you 5 armor, that's very good. Armor to all of your allies, it's a very, very good pushing item. It's good on heroes like Lycan as well, he's not in Dota 2 yet. And finally... Um, also gives you mana regen. 0.8 instead of 0.65. That is the difference. Um, it's basically a very glorified Ring of Basilius. It's not worth it in the early mid game. I just proved you guys as a level 7 hero, actually. It doesn't give me that much damage, even if I level up to like. Uh, oops. 
Alright, so I'm actually going to skill my ulti twice. So this is going to be the most extreme example of somebody who has a lot of base stat at level 11. I'm going to drop this once again. 14 damage as a level 11 hero, and you're paying an extra 1500 gold for that. You know, it's not always worth it. Um, another thing is the um, the melee lifesteal aura, or the right lifesteal aura is only for melee heroes. So actually it's a waste on Draw Ranger. This would not give me a lifesteal. Don't buy this on ranged heroes. If you have a team of like 5 carries, man, somebody buy a Vlad's. But once again, it's an aura item. Make sure only one guy has it. If more people, more than one people buy a Vlad's, absolute waste. Don't do it. It's totally a pub mistake. Alright, the last item. Very, very, very good item. It's a pipe of insight. The buildup is a hood of defiance. This is also a recipe. It's in one of these other shops that I haven't gotten to. But it is a regen item. Regen, regen, and finally a cloak. It gives you 30% magic resistance. It's very, very good. And to build a pipe, you also need a headdress. This is the same item as in a mechanism. And finally, a pipe recipe. And what this does is gives you spell resistance, much like the hood, 30%. Gives you 3 extra HP regen per second, but it gives you an active that allows you to put a buff on your allies for how much time? It doesn't say. Like 10 seconds or something that blocks 400 spell damage. Only spell damage. So basically if I pop this in a team fight and a Tide Hunter ultis us and does 450 damage, my team only takes 50 damage. And that's just the same as giving your teammates 400 HP. That is a shitload of HP. Pipe of Insight, very very good item. Alright, Caster Stage. Only four more shops to go guys. Force Staff. Force Staff is a very cool int item basically. Intelligence, damage, attack, speed, it builds up from a staff of wizardry, a quarter staff, and a recipe. It's 2200 gold. It was added semi recently, maybe like a year ago. You basically double click it, and actually it was added longer than that. It was added when Batrider was added. Um, it basically, you double click it, and it moves you forward. I'm actually using this. Double click, moves me forward 600 units basically. Uh, I'm gonna have to wait for it to cool down. Basically, moves you forward 600. This can shoot you over tree or through trees. If you shoot through trees, you destroy the trees. It can shoot you up a hill. It can shoot you down a hill. It's really useful. You can use it on your allies if your allies out of position or like somebody gets hooked and they're trying to run away. Force staff them away from danger, basically. So I'm gonna double tap it once again, and there we go. 600 units. Pretty cool item. Really, really good for support heroes. It's like a pseudo blink dagger. You can use this even if you're taking damage, unlike the blink dagger. So that's always really important to realize. Oh, man, I wonder if the game's gonna be over by the time, um, by the time I'm done here. That's I'm racing against time. Okay, um, what else? All right, four staff is done. Necronomicon. This allows you to spawn minions. I've talked about this in another video. I'll spawn them quick. Your top tower is under attack. Necronomicon spawns two yes. units. This one has 800 HP. This one has 800 HP as well. The melee one has a mana break, 75 mana drained every time that you that you hit. Uh, portion of which is delta damage. So it's not a full mana burn like anti mages is, but 75 mana burn and 70 or 60 percent of that is converted to damage. So he ends up hitting pretty hard. Last will, if he dies, he does 600 damage to whoever did the landing blow on him. This is pure damage. It's a crap load of damage, and he also provides true sight. He's like a gem. It's a very very cool little buff. The ranged one gives you a mana burn, 225 mana burn that does do 225 damage and they died. That sucks. And finally, the last ability that does is a 9% movement speed, attack speed aura. Um, uh, yeah, movement speed and attack speed aura for anybody that's around them while they're up. They just they time out there. 35 seconds, and then I've got a cooldown, so. That's Necro. You can upgrade it from Necro 1 to Necro 3. Costs more recipes. If you want to go from 1 to 3, you have to buy more of these item re recipes, and it will upgrade. The stats get better depending on the level, and the Necronomicons get more powerful as well, so. Okay, that's Necronomicon. Um, it's actually very good on some strength heroes like Rexar. It's good on int heroes. Um, usually there's better options, but it really isn't a bad item at all. Uh, Yule's Scepter of Divinity. This is a very good item. It's called Cyclone Stick. Generally, Yule's is a previous Dota developer. He was one of the first ones um, before Ginsu even. And what this does, it gives you 10 intelligence, gives you 150% mana regen, very good mana regen, and it gives you movement speed, one of the little weird quirks about it. It also gives you an active, you can target an enemy or yourself, and they'll be in a cyclone for 2.5 seconds, so. And I actually have to buy items from the secret shop, because there's a void stone in there. But, so I'm not going to be able to get it, but basically you can cyclone yourself for 2.5 seconds when you're in the air. Nobody can do damage to you, there's a few abilities that'll still go off, like you can cold feed somebody, and cyclone them, and when they land, they'll still get frozen cool stuff like that, but um, Yule's is actually a very good item. It's like a cheap sheep, sheep stick. It doesn't 
you can't hit people when you disable with them, but you, you can't hit people when, when you use it to disable, but it's still pretty useful. Dagon is a generally bad item. Um, you can upgrade it up to five times. It does 400 burst damage. It's very expensive in the mana department. The cooldown is really high, and generally it's not a very good item. Sometimes people get it on heroes like Nature's Prophet, which isn't always bad. But as a whole, guys, this is a total joke item. Do not pick it up. You can upgrade it up to level 5, but it's not worth it. It's so expensive. I'm going to actually click all the way through till I get to Dagon 5. And there it is. Level 5 Dagon. Every single recipe is 1,300. You can upgrade it. It's an 8,000 gold item. It gives you 800 burst damage. It's really not worth it. People can get a hood. They can counter this for 2,000 gold. The item costs 8,000. And all of a sudden, the damage it's doing is severely reduced. So try not to... If you get a Dagon, guys, keep it at level 1. It's only 2,805 gold. Do you really want to spend 6k gold to get it, or, you know, 5k gold to get it all the way up to Dagon 8? It's not worth it. Alright, Veil of Discord here. Um, armor, Intelligence, HP Regen. This is an AoE um, item that basically lowers the magic resistance of the enemy team. It's very, very unused right now. Very unused. I'm not saying it's an amazing item. It's a pretty good item, but it's just not super used right now. And that's pretty much just because teams haven't acclimated. This item has been out for tops six months, eight months, something like that. It's it's one of the newest items, if not the newest item in the game. So don't pay too much attention to the Veil of Discord right now. Uh, build up is Helm of Iron Will, two Robe of the Magis, and a recipe. It's good, cool on heroes. I've seen people use it really cool, but it's not necessarily really good. All right, Aghanim Scepter is an item that is really great. It's used on so many heroes. It basically just upgrades the ultimate of certain heroes. You just have to know which heroes this is. If I look at Drow's ultimate, it doesn't say that my that an Aghanim Scepter upgrades it, so therefore I know Draw Ranger doesn't get an Aghanim Scepter. There's a lot of heroes that he uses it for. Um, the build-up is a point booster and all of the plus 10 stat items, so it doesn't necessarily fill a certain niche, but it has a lot of viability. It's a moderately expensive item, not extremely expensive, but it's very good on some heroes, so make sure you just look up and uh, look into your item builds of the heroes you're playing. Aghanim Scepter is sometimes a very good choice. Orchid of Malevolence, I talked about these Oblivion Staffs before you build three of them and you get an Orchid. It's basically a damage item for int heroes, or a damage item for heroes that also want intelligence regen. Gives you 20 int, 30% attack speed, 45 damage, which is a nice balance. Attack speed and damage give you a lot of damage over time. And it has a shitload of mana regen, 225%. I believe that's the highest mana regen item in the game. It also gives you a silence for 5 seconds that you can use on a single hero. And after that 5 seconds, the damage that they did, 25% um, of that is also applied. So if I do 500 damage to a guy over 5 seconds, they take a bonus 100 damage. It's a very good item. Silencing is good. You can use it against a lot of blinking heroes, like Queen of Pain. It's very good. Anti-mage, heroes like that. Heroes that are hard to gank and use invisibility or something like that. So... Refresher Orb is probably one of the most unused items in, or unused items in the under, in the whole game. I wouldn't say it's underused. I say it's unused. P nobody uses it. Five thousand three hundred gold. It lets you reset all of your cooldowns. This is cool on heroes like Tide Hunter because you can ult twice in a row. But it's really expensive and nobody ever goes for it. It costs three hundred seventy five mana to activate. That's the rough part. Three hundred seventy five mana. Most people, most players, don't have that much mana. They can't cast that big ulti use the refresher and cast their big ulti again because usually their big ultis cost like 400 mana already so it's you're looking at a shitload of mana that has a oblivion staff and a perseverance build up with a recipe the recipe itself is 1875 really expensive item side of the vice is arguably uh the best item in the game um at least on interiors it is it requires a mystic staff an ultimate orb and a, a void stone it gives you 10 of all stats, 25 extra intelligence, so 35 intelligence, and 150% mana regen. So it regens just as much as the Yule Scepter does. It's active, sheep somebody for 3.5 seconds. Now, a sheep is not exactly the same as a stun. You can still move your hero just a little bit. If you're at max movement speed, like if you have a haste rune or something and you get sheeped, you're still max movement speed, but you're essentially stunned, pretty much. You can move slightly, but you're stunned. So it's really, really good in a mid-game late, mid late game team fight against hard carries. Side the vice man, go for it seriously. Very, very good item. It's expensive, but if you can get there and you get like two or three sides of ice on your team, it makes all the difference to fighting carries, seriously. If they don't have match community, you sheep him, you wait three and a half seconds, you wait for somebody else to sheep him, and all of a sudden he hasn't done anything for a stupidly long time in a team fight. 
Alright, uh, weapons are going to be pretty easy. Um, Crystallis is a build-up item towards the Daedalus. It's just a crit item, basically. See, it is. It's a weak crit item. The Daedalus is a better crit item. If you're looking for crits, if you're a lifesteal hero, Daedalus is a good choice, usually. Armlet is good for strength heroes. It basically has these basic stats. It, if you turn it, if you activate it, it gives you bonus damage, bonus attack speed, uh, and bonus strength. The problem is that it lowers your HP by 37 per second. So this means that after a certain period of time, it does increase your strength when you use it, so it's not like you're automatically losing HP right away, but basically it's draining on your HP. It's really good on strength heroes like Slardar is pretty good, Lifestealer it's very good, uh, Saint Skeleton King is very good, any hero who also has Lifesteal to offset that damage per time. But don't be afraid to get an armlet, it's very good on a lot of strength heroes. Skullbasher is a mostly un unused item, does damage strength, it has a percent chance of bashing, works much better with melee heroes, 25% with melee, 10% with range, and it has a 2 second cooldown so you can't just perma bash a guy. At most you can get 1.4 second stun out of 2 seconds, at most. So uh, generally don't get this item, it's really not good, there's always, always going to be better choices. Unless you're like a full item anti-mage and you can't chase anyone or something. Shadow Blade is a uh, very basic item for... Um, it's it's kind of situational. It's generally concerned a noob item. It was called Lothars in Dota 1. It gives you damage and attack speed. It has, it's active as you click it, you go invisible. And you get 20% 20 per, 20 movement speed bonus. If you break the invisibility with an auto attack, you gain 150 bonus damage. So it's it's a pretty good item. It's good for initiating... It's good on heroes like Nature's Prophet because he can gank with it. It's good on heroes like Drow Ranger who are hard to, makes him hard to kill at least on a pub level. People like it on Sniper and people and stuff like that. But against a good team, they're always going to get dust. They're always going to get Sentry Wards, and they're just going to kill you anyways. So if you're playing at low pub level, go for it, guys. Get a Shadow Blade. It's going to keep you survivable. Um, all you got to do is press the hotkey and run away. But if you're good against good players, it's not going to save you. I can tell you that right now. Battle Fury is a farming item. It costs uh, a couple blades and a perseverance. It gives you HP regen and mana regen, and it uh, gives you a lot of damage. the The special ability is that it does an AOE cleave it, of 35% wise. So 35% of the damage you do as a melee hero. This is only as a melee hero. Cleaves and basically gives you a melee attack. It really increases your damage against things like neutral creeps and pushing creep ways. It allows you to push much easier. Um, heroes like Void, Anti-Mage, Battle Fury is very good for. Ethereal Blade is a build-up from the uh, um, Eagle Horn and, or, I'm sorry, Eagle Song and the Ghost Scepter. It basically gives you a nuke. You'll b make somebody Ethereal. You'll do damage two times your agility plus 75, and um, and then you can use other follow-up magic spells. It's it's kind of interesting to get it on a hero like Lena or something, but that's very uncommon. Usually the the most the one hero in the game that gets it semi often, if at all is going to be Morphling, because Morphling has other abilities that do big damage, and that is just uh, um, accelerated by getting an Ethereal Blade. So um, That's that item. Very uncommon, but it gives you agility, and uh, a lot of agility, 40 agility, and a bunch of strength. So it's a pretty cool item. Manta Style is an extremely good uh, agility item. It's some It gets picked up on some strength heroes and a few int heroes as well. Primarily is an agility item. Um, builds up with a Ultan Orb and a Yasha. A Yasha is components of Blade of Alacrity and a Boots of Elven Skate. What Yasha does gives you agility, it gives you attack speed, and it gives you movement speed. Based on your current movement speed. I think that's based on your base, if I remember correctly. Um, so what this item does actively, you click it, you split up. It's good on Draw Ranger, so I'll use it here. Bam, I split. I can dodge spells with that. These have a timer. They do a reduced portion of my damage. I believe it's 28% for ranged and 33% for melee. I am correct, I believe. Um, that number is wrong. I don't know if that's uh, uh, just a... I, I assume that's just a mistype. It's supposed to be 28% for ranged and 33% for melee. And as you can see, as time runs out, they run out. I could control those, of course. I can micro them or whatever. Very good on heroes like Draw Ranger Sniper. You should almost always get a Manta style instead of a Lothars, because this gives me HP. It gives me survivability and, uh, you know, confuses the enemy. Manta style, really, really good on uh, on pretty much all carries. Usually ranged, though. Very good on ranged heroes, ranged carries. Radiance is a tank damage item, basically. Um, it does 40 uh, burn damage. You see it on a lot of heroes like Weaver and Doombringer. And um, can I think of another one? Uh, not necessarily. Nothing that's necessarily in Dota 2 right now that I can think of. But it does also gives you 60 damage. The build up is a Sacred Relic, that major damage item in the Secret Shop. And it has a recipe, Spectre, duh. That's what I'm thinking of. 
Basically, it's really good on any um, hard-to-kill hero that's going to be up in the face of the enemy, because you're going to stand there and just do AoE damage. It's, it's I think, I seem to remember it's the most damage per second efficient item for its gold. And it's very good for farming as well, and pushing, so Radiant's good on a couple heroes. Just take your item builds. Monkey King Bar here. Um, this item does plus 88 damage, gives you a little bit of attack speed as well, and it gives you a 35% chance to bash, mini bash. The bash is so fast that it basically doesn't slow down your enemies at all. They can interrupt, the, you can interrupt their animations and stuff, but it's not really that much. But most importantly, the mini bash does magic damage, and you can use it to cancel TP scrolls, or cancel channeling spells, basically. I already went over the data list, a lot of damage, a lot of crit, 25% crit, chance for 250% extra damage. So basically, when you crit, you do 2.5 times more damage. Butterfly is one of the best agility items in the game. Um, requires a Talisman of Evasion, a Eagle Song, and a Quarter Staff. It gives you attack speed, gives you agility, and gives you damage. This is the single most, probably the most damaging item um, in the game for agility heroes, because it increases your attack speed by 60%. That's a crap load and it increases your damage by 60. That is a huge number for agility heroes. And it gives you the evasion, so basically it makes you much more survivable to physical attacks and harder to kill. Pretty cool stuff. And the best damage item in the game is Divine Rapier. It gives you plus 250 damage, that's right. Plus 250 damage. The reason this is so expensive and good for its cost ratio, it's you know 200 gold more than a butterfly. What it does is, if you die, it drops. It's kind of like a cheesy item, it's kind of like the Dagon in a way. It's something that you almost never see, and basically teams either build it to come back from a huge deficit, or they build it if they're just screwing around. So uh, generally don't get that item. Two more shops, look at this. We're so close. All right. Hood of Defiance I went over. Um, magic Resistance, Blade Mail, is going to be a interesting item. Um, it gives you damage, armor, intelligence, the active. If you click it, any damage you take in four seconds gets returned to your enemy. So, for example, if an enemy does 100 damage to me and my armor reduces that down to 50 damage, Blade Mill is going to return 50 pure damage to the enemy that just that did the damage to me. So it doesn't give you obscene amounts of damage reflection because it is reduced by magic resistance and armor, but it still makes a big difference against those heroes who do way more damage than the HP they have. So against like a, a low HP Drow Ranger, pop a Blade Mill, she'll hit you, and all of a sudden that damage will be reflected towards um, uh, towards that guy. So I have to actually stop this push down here, apparently. Let's take a break. Attack! Oh god, I should upgrade. Stats. I should probably grab the stats before I split off, that's okay. Mana burn. Mana burn, yeah. Arrow, fly. I guess I have to kill us. Alright, uh, while I'm doing that, I guess I'm just gonna hold position with her and <laughs> continue the shopping. Alright, Blade Mail, so... Blade Mail, pretty good. Vanguard, one of the best damage blocking items in the game. 275 health, gives you HP regen and damage block. Once again, there's that same property. Range block 20 damage, melee block 40. The block chance is 60%. It's basically really good for increasing your HP and your regen, and the damage block is a nice bonus. If you're a ranged hero. If you're a melee hero, the damage block is very nice. So don't be afraid to get this on a melee carry or a hero who's generally in the in the middle of a battle. Soul Booster is a buildup of a bloodstone. It costs the three basic boosters. It gives you 400 HP, 400, 450 HP, 400 mana, and some regen. Black King Bar, a very good item as well. This is going to make you magic immune for up to 10 seconds when you use it the first time. Also gives you 10 strength and 24 damage. As you use it, though, it becomes less and less effective, and they basically did this because there was a point in the Dota metagame where everybody would build a Black King Bar, and every single team fight, everybody would be magic immune, basically, and it was really stupid. So, um, as you use it more than five times, uh, it, it'll go all the way down to the lowest is the five second duration, and the cooldown also decreases, so um, it's, it's a very good item on a lot of people. Becoming magic immune makes a big difference. Enemy's middle tower has fallen. Shiva's Guard is a cool intelligence item that also gives you armor, so this is good if you're a semi-carry or a support hero who basically also wants survivability. It gives you 15 armor, 30 intelligence. The nice thing that it does, it um, makes a freezing aura, which reduce, reduces attack speed on enemies. I believe it's 25%. Yes, it is. So any enemy that stands near you, not only do you have high armor and you're hard to kill, but it also reduces their attack speed by 25%. That's a big deal in a team fight. 25% is a big number. Also, if you click on it, it does an AoE that does 200 damage. It's actually one of the coolest items in the game. I would buy it, but um, actually we'd have to go to the secret shop. So, cost of plate mail, mystic staff, and a recipe. Really cheap recipe. Pretty cheap item. 
uh, but very good. All right, there's that Bloodstone. It is an upgrade from the Soul Booster. This gives you more HP and regen. It gives you a lot of mana regen. Basically, you accrue, you accrue charges, and with charges, you um, regen a lot more mana. It's not very used on a lot of heroes, primarily only heroes like occasionally Storm Spirit, not very often. It used to be a really popular Storm Spirit item, but Leshrac is pretty good with Bloodstone, and um, there's maybe another hero or two that uses it, but not that many, basically. Lincoln Sphere is used to block spells. It costs a Perseverance, an Ultimate Orb, and a Recipe. It'll block one spell every 20 seconds. It's not all spells, just most targeted spells like Hex or, um, you know, like, usually heroes, like, abilities that you click on an enemy to use. Stuff like that. There's a list. You guys can look it up online. It's a pretty good item. It's not really that amazing on a lot of heroes. Generally, most players or heroes won't get it. You see it on Weaver sometimes. Stuff like that because you don't want them to get disabled. Assault Curious is a Your huge armor item. Ends up giving you 15 armor here. And, um... We've got work to do. Your top tower is under attack. Work to do! Split! Alright, Assault Curious gives you 15 armor, 10 of which, 5 of which is an aura. That's applied to your allies. The aura does not stack with the Vlads. The armor does not. Um, that's important to notice. It also gives your allies a armor aura attack speed of 20%, and it also reduces the aura, the armor of an enemy by 5, which is a big number. That also works on towers, so very good item for pushing and generally increasing damage of strength heroes, usually. Strength heroes really like this item. Um, so it's a very good item, uh, good for pushing, good for survivability, good for attack speed. Heart of Trusk is the best HP item in the game. It gives you 40 strength and 300 health. I think that works out to be... If I'm doing my math right, it's just under 800, so 760 plus 400, or 300, so just over 1,000 HP. I think I'm doing my math right. Um, yes, just over 1,000 HP, and if you're not taking any damage, you regen 2% of your health per second. This can be interruptible by player damage, only player damage. You can tank towers with this item, but not players. The last shop! I'm gonna make it. Oh god, I racks them. Oh god, guys, I racks them. I gotta hurry. Okay, shit. Shit. Alright, Helm of the Dominator, here we go. God, I can't actually stop this. Helm of the Dominator helps you lifesteal, um, gives you armor, you can take a neutral creep, this is good against some heroes, check your item builds. Mask of Madness, life steals as well, gives you an attack speed bonus, but it also lets you take more damage, 20% bonus attack speed. This is a very, very dangerous thing to do. Um, generally it's best with a Black King Bar as a whole though, don't get this item unless you're playing Void with a Black King Bar or you're really good at Chronospheres. Sanj and Yasha build into a uh, a major item. It is right here. It basically uses a Sanj and Yasha movement speed. It gives you uh, maiming as well, which slows players. It's a percent chance. You guys might have to check this stuff out after the cast. <laughs> Maelstrom here um, gives you attack speed and damage. It also gives you a 25% chance to shoot a chain lightning, which does magic damage. So if you want a component of magic damage, it's pretty cool. And that does balance hitting four heroes. So it's also a good pushing item, but almost never built. Diffusal Blade um, gives you Agility Intelligence, it gives you a, 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 a clickable ability, it's called Purge, isn't that awesome? I actually chose that username before I knew about the ability for the record. Um, it also gives you Feedback, like Anti-Mage, 20 damage per hit, this game is totally going to end here. You can upgrade this to level 2 if you run out of charges, it has charges, 8 charges at level 1. Desolator, massive music, here we go. I don't think I'll have to leave the game, so everything will be fine. Um, Desolator is a damage item, gives you 60 damage, reduces armor by 6, this is like AC, this is applied to towers or heroes that you're using it on, so it increases your physical damage, very good for that. I already talked about Sanj and Yasha, we can look at the main, main components by themselves once again. Um, Sanj is a Ogre Club and a Belt of Giant Strength, gives you 10 damage and 16 strength with that maim chance. Yasha gives you agility and attack speed, we talked about that before I believe. Um, Mjolnir is an upgrade of the Maelstrom. It basically has a Hyperstone and a Recipe, and it gives you a lot of attack speed with those chain procs, of those chain lightning procs. Eye of Scotty is very, very underbuilt. Ultimate Orb, Ultimate Orb, Point Booster, Orb of Venom, the only item Orb of Venom uses for. And it gives you a permanent Orb Slow. Make sure... I, I didn't mention this before, guys, but all of these items here are Orbs. You have to be aware that only one, you can only use one orb at a time, so for example, Draw Ranger with Frost Arrows. Um, they count as an orb and a buff placer, but essentially, what you have to be aware of is if, if, for example, if I have a Helm of the Dominator, and I'm auto-attacking 
with no with my, my frost arrows, I'm life stealing. If I right click my frost arrows, my frost arrows go off, and the helmet dominator doesn't work. At least the life steal component does doesn't. And that's pretty much the case with most of these items. There's some really weird rules going on um, from Dota from like Warcraft three, but generally just remember you can only have one orb, and you can override them by right clicking your orbs. So sometimes it's not a bad thing to have life steal and draw ranger. Don't be afraid to do that. I of Scotty is a buff placer. It actually works on ranged heroes. If they only have an orb, so you can do, let's for example, let's say I never used my frost arrows, I could get an Eye of Scotty and a Helm of the Dominator, but that's something you just have to know from Dota, I don't think they explain that very well here. And the last item is the Satanic, which is an upgraded Helm of the Dominator. Uh, this item up here basically gives you even more regen, you use a Reaver on top of it, and it has a passive, or a uh, an active that basically gives you stupid amounts of lifesteal for 3.5 seconds, and this is almost never built, but... Alright, shit, I went over it. That took like 60 minutes, guys. I, I'm sorry, I hope that... I know that was probably extremely boring to go over. Um, and I obviously did skip some of the items there. But it, I, I hope this... I'm sure this helped at least a couple people. Um, I almost don't want to post this because it's so boring. I know for a fact it was boring as shit compared to everything else that I normally do. A lot of me talking, 60 minutes of me talking. But um, hopefully, um, for those of you that aren't in the game or too lazy to go look it up yourself, you now know the fantastic things that are in the game. So those are all the items, guys. That's what you're playing with. There's so much variety. All of the item variety is part of the reason why Dota is so freaking dynamic. I mean, every single hero can choose from these items, and what you pick is really going to impact the game in major amounts. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Feel free to send this to your friends who are lazy and okay to watch something that's 60 minutes and boring if they're really into that. Um, I guess it's probably easier for me to explain it to you than it is for you to read it passively because I can get the point off really fast. But I think that's it. Alright, thanks for watching, guys. I will see you later. Bye.